<laughs> Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no longer know? These for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. In my hand no price I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Amen. Alleluia. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown and behold thee on thy throne, rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Oh, amen, amen, alleluia, 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 amen, amen. Sorry, I to, <laughs> off key, off tune a little bit there, but uh, you, uh, you sing a song unto our Lord Jesus Christ from your heart. He appreciates it. He appreciates it. This morning in prayer, I have been recently more so than not been taking the scriptures with me in prayer and just reading the scripture in prayer to uh, our Lord not not praying the scriptures as if um, as if beg your pardon brethren I forgot to uh, I forgot to uh... <laughs> sorry about that yes yeah, not that in prayer you're uh, you know that I remember uh, whole verses of I mean I do but you know to recite in prayer just a psalm, but, um, you know, reading in prayer scriptures this morning and in prayer for so many, so many of the brethren. Lord, uh, led me to Psalm 61. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. The authorized version of the scriptures. Church of the living God. Brother of mine, friend, said to me yesterday, Do you realize when people who are aware of the argument and utter the word Christian, do you realize that they're mocking the church of the living God? It's a good point, brother. It's a very good point. Very good point. I know for certain that there are many of you out there who are struggling right now. And while you got these Christians rubbing it in your face, their opulence, their, their blessings, their prosperity and whatnot. And yes, we as the Church of the Living God, praise the Lord that a brother is doing well. Praise the, like, uh, again, uh, my, uh, my dear friend, uh, my brother from North Dakota, the Lord's provision officially, officially came to him. Now, with a little frugality, <laughs> but, you know, uh, dearly, dearly beloved sister, hearing how the Lord is working through her. A, a, a young brother um, seeking to become a voice in the wilderness, a voice unto his people. Um, uh, uh, my dear friend from Australia, how the Lord is using him. Like I said to you before, hearing these things, hearing how the Lord is glorifying himself in his body, the church of the living God. Praise the Lord for that. And we have the church of the living God. We don't rub it in the people's faces, but, you know, help us together of their joy. You know, we can joy with our brethren that, yay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's when you got these Christians who are rubbing it in the, your face. I'm better than you because I've reached this level. That's 
that's that's disgusting. That is disgusting. That is disgusting. But I know. Oh, I know. I know for certain that there are those of you who are struggling today. Struggling with the skin suit. Struggling with your past. Struggling to move forward. Struggling to move forward. Especially when you have these oppressive devils. <laughs> or on this in another video. Uh, these oppressive devils. Devils. Who want to just keep people held back. Who keep them down. I know a lot of you are struggling. And yes, people who are associated with myself and with the Church of the Living God, yes, we do pray for other people. We do labor and travail in prayer. We weep for others. Oh, we sure do. We sure do. You know, you ask, you ask me personally. It's like, Brad, pray for me. We, we pray for you. We pray for you. How many people's like, oh, we'll pray for you, and they never do. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if we're in prayer for nearly two hours. When's the last time you were in prayer for a half an hour? But even if we're in prayer for two hours. Praying, weeping for people. People who lost loved ones. Lo lost loved ones of whom I can't even fathom. We pray for people. We pray for people. And I know that many of you are struggling right now. Actually, literally, struggling. Psalm 61. Psalm 61. Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, may we repent of ourselves, that Thou, O Lord, that You may be all in all in us today, the Church of the Living God. By Your head, Lord, uh, pray as we go through this this Psalm, Psalm sixty-one, that the Church of the Living God may be edified, may be um, strengthened, that You may be glorified today, Lord Jesus Christ, and may You lead me, guide me. Uh, may you guide them, Lord. May you give them eyes to see, uh, ears to hear, and understanding hearts, and guide them into the scriptures. And maybe show them other things that you haven't shared with me today. Please lead us and guide us today. We ask this in Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen. Let us never forget, while there are those out there who want to uh, attack this, let us never forget the necessity, the necessity Doctrinally, doctrine is pertaining unto salvation. Instruction in righteousness is our modus operandi, way of living as the church of the living God. You can get that, obviously, within the Pauline epistles, of course, but you never neglect the Old Testament. Why? Paul admonishes us not to neglect it. In, Saul, in Proverbs, in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, follow me along in the scriptures. Word for word, verse by verse. Pro uh, <laughs> Proverbs. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Bible, scriptures, might have hope. Might have hope. What is your hope in? Psalm 61, verse 1. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. Are you at the end of your rope where every little thing of man, of flesh, is exhausted? That your only option left is to go to God? But we as the church of the living God, that is our morning, that is our morning cry. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah 49. Oh, this is just so beautiful. Isaiah chapter 49. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 49, verses 7 on to verse 9. 
Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth. If you are of the church of the living God, you are of his bones and of his flesh. All who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're associated with Christ. We are his body, of his body, of his flesh, of his bones and stuff. Yeah, men despise us. To him whom the nation abhorreth, and of course this is making reference on to Jesus Christ. To a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful. And the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. He shall choose thee. God is a God who chooses. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant to the people, to establish the earth, to cause, to inherit the desolate heritages. heritages. To establish the earth, to cause, to inherit the desolate heritages. Excuse me. That thou mayest say to the prisoners, the prisoners, Go forth to them that are in darkness, shew yourselves. They shall feed in the way in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. Say to the prisoners, hmm, Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter two. And like I said, just in prayer, the Lord, uh, you know, He led me to this, and I read it with the Lord, and it's like, wow, oh, man. <laughs> 2 <laughs> Timothy chapter 2, verses 25 on to verse 26. Speaking unto us at the church of the living God. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, who are stubborn, who don't want to come unto our Lord Jesus Christ on his terms. Okay? They want to be a thief and a robber and go up some other way. They, there's just that one thing that they lack. More on that in another video. But, okay? In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And remember, uh, repentance doesn't mean repentance. <laughs> it means belief. <laughs> yeah. Shh. More on that in an appropriate time. Let's continue. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Prisoners held captain by Satan. You of the church of the living God, we have been set free from the bondage of sin, but yet we're still going to sin. Okay? Are you serving the flesh? Are you serving the flesh? Because what does it say in Romans chapter 6? Verse, uh, what is it? Uh, verse 13, right? No, verse uh, Romans 6, verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? It's servants. See, the Bibles put slaves in there. Slaves don't have their own will. Slaves are, <laughs> slaves are held at gunpoint, okay? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? Choice servant. His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. Obedience. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now, we are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, sealed until the day of redemption. Yes, he cannot deny himself. We'll look at that. But um, you living in sin and living and going after the flesh, oh, your salvation, is, you're secure. But there are a lot of things he can deny you of. Okay, and let, while we're in the, here, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. In vain, be careful of that. Why? To be used for your lusts, to go after the flesh, the skin suit and the things that pertain thereof. 
For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And it says, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. This is the acceptable time. This time of the Gentiles. This dispensation. Anyone. God's gift of salvation is there for anyone to have. You just got to go to him how he prescribes for you in the scriptures. You go up some other way. You're going in vain. But now, this is the accepted time. Us Gentiles can, are grafted into that tree of the Jew, the Hebrew. Okay? This is the accepted time where salvation has been openly shewed to everybody. But are you going to go there on his terms? Hmm? Hmm? Philippians chapter 4. Of course, we, we could not get away from something like this without going to Philippians. Of course, of course not. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 4 on to verse 7. Okay? <laughs> Psalm 61, verse 1. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. So, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Moderation. Not gluttony, moderation. Okay? If you don't need it, don't covet it. God abhors covetousness. Okay? If you have nothing to pay, why would he take away your bed from under thee? Hmm? And the price of your sin, of my sin, hello, we cannot pay that price. So, let's mind how we're walking. Yes. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. That doesn't mean be flippant, okay? That doesn't mean live carelessly, okay? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then it talks about in 1 John, which I believe we will be touching on, about if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Okay? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And of course... 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 on to verse 7. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud. And giveth grace to the humble. God resisteth the proud. And giveth grace to the humble. And like uh, someone said in the comment section. Yes. God who humbled himself. To behold the things that are on earth and under heaven. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Like someone said in the comment section. The most amazing act of humility is Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Roll that around in your head for a little bit, huh? Absolutely. And of course, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Now, the time that you choose, in the time that he chooses, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. 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 And 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Verses 13 on to verse 15. 1 John chapter 3. 
Mm -hmm. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Mm. So, so, hear my, hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. Mm. Someone who is of the church of the living God. Mm. Who are you praying to? We have the Church of the Living God. We're praying to the Lord Jesus Christ. But someone who is a Christian who isn't really saved, who are you praying to? Hmm. Again, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Marvel not. We were told this was going to happen. Why? Because we have passed from death unto life. Henceforth, the world hateth us because it knoweth not him. Oh, they know of him up here, but they don't know. They don't know who God is. They don't know God. Okay? Hear my, prayer, hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. We're back in Psalm 61. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. Psalm 139. That is one that someone will use also to uh, do the flat earth thing. We're not going to get into that, so leave it alone. Okay, Psalm 139, 5 through 10. Okay, and let, let's refresh ourselves before we get into this, okay? From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. Psalm 139, verses 5 on to verse 10. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. <laughs> why, why the Lord would ever save a wretch like me and have mercy on us as the way he has? Praise God who has mercy on those who do not deserve it. Praise God who saves sinners who are chief. Okay? Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Now that's a lowercase s there. Yeah. Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Uh, who runs hell? Satan on his throne? No, uh, God does. Okay? Okay? <laughs> if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost, uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me, and thy right hand shall hold me. And Jesus sitteth on the right hand of God, remember, okay? From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. Church of the living God, where are you going to go where you are not going to be in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ? If you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus, God lives within you, Okay? You know, in the scripture, it says uh, where two or three are gathered together, uh, I am in the midst. That was before the death, burial, and resurrection, I believe. Um, but what, nonetheless, um, he's within you. He's going to hear your prayer. Is he going to acknowledge your prayer because you are walking according to the scripture? Now, you can't do that perfectly. No, no. But see, that's what makes God's grace so unspeakable. <laughs> that where you cannot do it, thou, O oh Lord, thou, O oh Lord, how many of us are trying to do it in our own strength? Look how it goes for you. But see, the point is, from the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. Where are you going to go from him? Huh? Where are you going to go, church of the living God? You have no hope except the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He's within you. Where are you going to go? You can't go here, there, anywhere. Because you have the Lord within you. So, from the ends of the earth, may I cry unto thee. You don't have to go to a church building. You don't have to go here. You don't have to go there. You don't have to go to your secret place. You can pray anywhere. You can speak to God the Father at any time. Yeah, yeah, amen. When my heart is overwhelmed, 
Oh, yeah. When my heart is overwhelmed. Oh, boy. Psalm 17. Psalm 17, verses 8 on to verse 15. Oh, boy. When your heart is overwhelmed. And I know for certain that there are many of you right now whose heart is overwhelmed. Psalm 17. Did I say 17? Yes. 8 on the verse 15, the close of the chapter. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who can pass me about. <laughs> More on that in another video. They are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth, they speak proudly. They're enclosed in their own fat. Jeshurun waxed fat. He kicked. Jeshurun, what is that? They're enclosed in their own fat. And their own prosperity and their own blessings. They're enclosed in their own fat. Yeah, and because of that, with their mouth, they speak proudly. Oh, these coadjutors. They speak proudly, they speak wickedly, they lie, and sentence against an evil work isn't executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of man is haughty. I just bright eyes that. Beg your pardon? Hmm? Hmm? They have now compassed us in our steps. And amen. Amen. See, we as a church of the living God, we got a circle of wagons because the enemy is coming around us on all sides. People who you thought you were ain't. And those who you know they are, they are definitely aren't, they just want to pick a scab <laughs> and want to just dredge up dust because that's all they can do. They're inept, okay? We need to circle our wagons, brethren. Amen. They have, compa they have not compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth, looking down on people. Like as a lion that, greedy, that is greedy of his prey, and as it were, a young lion lurking in secret places. Right here. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. That's an interesting uh, wording right there. From the wicked, which is thy sword. Yes, God will allow wicked people to execute his judgment on other wicked people. Yes. The wicked, which is his sword, he uses, he allows the wicked. Satan is the little g-god of this world. Why? For judgment upon the wicked. Okay? Okay? Yeah. You know where it says, my sword will be bathed in heaven? God's judgment. Okay? From men which are thy hand, okay, we're all made in the image of God, meaning we all have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay, dress that before. Uh, hold on, let me pause this. Writing that down so I can remember to put it in the description box, okay? But yes, we all have a spirit, soul, and body. That is the image of God that we are made in. That we have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body, okay? All right. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world which have their portion in this life. Yeah. And whose belly thou hast filled with thy hid treasure. They are full of children. And leave the rest of their substance to their babes. You know how our Lord Jesus Christ talked about the widow with the two mites. How the Pharisees uh, cast in about of their abundance. Because they had, it's like, here, I have an abundance here. But the poor widow cast in her two mites. Gave her everything. Everything. And what did the Lord say of her? She hath cast in more. Than all they, because she cast in her living everything. She gave her everything, see. And they, they're just the refuge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Which have their portion in this life. Woe be to you if men speak well of you. You got your portion in this life. Yeah. How many of you? And, and think about this too, uh, brethren. How many out there have exchanged greater rewards in heaven? 
who are of the church of the living God. This is a possibility. This is a real possibility. Those that will be rich, okay, fall into many hurtful lusts, snares, and temptations. I just, Brad, I said, beg your pardon, okay? But they do. But there are those of the church of the living God who can get messed up with that. How many of the church of the living God have replaced blessings in heaven so that they can have a good life down here? How many? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? And these devils. <laughs> I hope you have a really good life. <laughs> More on that in another video. Okay? But let's continue. As for me, as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake when I awake with thy likeness. Awake, you know, arise from sleep, O sleeper. Okay? I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Being born again. Isn't that something? And, and let's look at that again. Psalm 61. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. Anywhere. You can speak to the Lord anywhere. It doesn't matter where. Church of the living God. When my heart is overwhelmed... As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likenessness. Okay? Lead me to the, right there it is, lowercase r, rock. That is higher than I. You, you remember that, right? That the rock is higher than you? What is it with you, some of you? You want to put yourself on the level of the rock, don't you? Yeah, don't you? Yeah, uh, what does that say in Psalm 50? Uh, yeah, turn that real quick. Psalm 50, uh, verse 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. Yeah, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Yeah, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. This was not the video that I had thought I was going to do today, but see, this is not, I'm not in charge here. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 under verse 4. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. A similar uh, context or construct of wording is found in the book of Isaiah when our Lord says, Give ear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. I have raised up a people and they have not known me. That's Isaiah chapter 1, okay? Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain under the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. And there is only one name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. Jesus Christ. Okay? Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the capital R, Rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Just and right is he. Amen. Hallelujah. And we are not the rock ourselves. Got to remember that. Okay? And also, too, while we're in Deuteronomy, look at verse 31. For their rock, their rock, little case R, is not as our capital case R, rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges, ye shall know them by their fruits. They testify of, them, of their own selves that their rock, they're Christians, that their rock is not our rock. They testify of themselves. You know them by their fruits. Again, more on that in another video. Okay? And 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. <laughs> our rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. Who dwells within us, within us. Anywhere we go. Everywhere we go. When 
you are overwhelmed? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 under verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses, meaning identification, in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual, capital R, rock, that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Okay? And Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. You, you have access to God the Father. He's not an errand boy. Okay? He is not an adornment that you put on, but you can go on to the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? It's, he's not like a shirt that you put on and off, okay? He dwells within you. Where are you going to go from him? Where are you going to hide? What? <laughs> you you can, you can, you, he's within you. What, what does it mean? What is it, what is it to you? What they do? When your heart is overwhelmed, who do you turn to? Okay. Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54, verses 11 on to verse 17, the close of the chapter. Here's a little encouragement for you. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphire. And I will make thy windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he departs, he shall not depart from it. And unfortunately, with some, the apple don't far, uh, fall far from the tree, huh? If the root is bad, the fruit's going to be bad, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And I will make thy windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. I think I skipped this. Excuse me. Forgive me. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Well, it sure is surrounding, but... The hidden man of that heart, of your heart. Hmm? You know, like I told you, Paul bore in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus. They were trying to whip Christ out of him. Guess what, cousin? But it ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. The roof can fall on your head. The, the rug can be pulled out from under you. You're of the church of the living God. You're sealed until the day of redemption. No matter what the world does unto you, you are you have that hope living within you. That hope is Jesus Christ. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt not be far from uh, Yes. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold. They shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Mm -hmm. Oh, and how many of these devils come against us, Church of the Living God? How many of the righteous, self-righteous come against us? Huh? Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy, the wicked which is thy sword. Okay? No weapon form. Now, Christians trivialize this, but this is a real truth and comfort that we have the church of the living God. You know, men can kill us, but the Lord lives within us. You know? <laughs> Our Lord said, my father is greater than I. Talking about the soul of the Godhead. The soul is greater than the body. Okay? Okay? No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. 
and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. What is that heritage? The Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, <laughs> brother, sister. Oh, brother, sister. Take comfort. Take comfort. Psalm 61, from the ends of the earth, reading verse 2 again, will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Verse 3, for thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Psalm 27, Ooh. <laughs> Psalm 27, Psalm 27, praise the Lord, alleluia, alleluia. Psalm 27, verses 5 on to verse 8. Psalm 27, verses 5 on to verse 8. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. He shall set me up upon a rock. <laughs> Lowercase r, yes, but uh, no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. <laughs> when thou saidest, O oh, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. And remember in Amos chapter 4, sometimes the Lord will allow certain bad things to happen unto us because our focus has been gotten out of whack and we need to turn our attention back to the Lord. Okay? Amos chapter 4. Read it sometime. Very encouraging. Uh, very good for our instruction in righteousness today. Okay? And, of course, Second Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Not Hebrews, Brad. <laughs> Close. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 16 on to verse 18. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. And strengthen me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Who's going to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, dear brother, dear sister? You're in sin, you're messed up. Repent. Get right with the Lord. Put those things away and press forward, man. Because devils want to keep you here and dig up and pick scabs. It's what they're best at. They're nothing. Pity them. Pity them. Woe, woeful creatures they are. Woeful creatures. Psalm 59. Psalm 59. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Psalm 59. Psalm 59, verses 1 on to verse 7. Deliver me from mine enemies, O my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. And save me from bloody men. <laughs> yeah. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me and behold. Thou therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressor, Selah. They return at evening. 
They make a noise like a dog. And go around about the city. Behold, they blurt, <laughs> belch out with their mouth. They just blurt things out. <laughs> Not even thought, you know, they forget to take their Ritalin injections or something. Or the true devil that's within them just comes out without their controlling it. Yeah. Swords are in their lips. For who say they doth hear? Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 61 again, verse 3. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Verse 4. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of, their, of your wings. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Silla. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I'm excited. Okay, this, the Lord showed me this. This is just oh, one, of the, one of these days, man. Psalm 59 Verses 8 under verse 17. Let's read verse 4 again. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Silla. Psalm 59. Verses 8 under verse 17. But thou, <laughs> O Lord, shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. God is my defense. The God of my mercy shall prevent me from me doing things, taking it matters in my own hands. Like David, who when Nabal said, I ain't helping you, even though you've helped me. And, Nabal, and David was like, okay, get your stuff. We're going to go kill this guy. And what was her name? Oh, I forget what her name was, um, Nabal's wife. Oh, I forget offhand, but Nabal's wife came to David. It's like, hey, whoa, whoa, hey, Lord, chill. <laughs> you know, Lord King David, that's why many. It's like, hey, chill, King David, Lord King David, okay? Chill, take this, you know, <laughs> you know, King Nabal, you know, Nabal, King Nabal. You know, Nabal, yeah, he's a king in his own heart. So is his name, Nabal, he's churlish, okay? Chill. Here. And then what did David do? He's like, I praise the Lord who prevented me from taking vengeance upon him with my own hand. Yes. <laughs> but thou, okay. Because, because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. I would like to see my enemies saved. There are certain ones out there who that's not going to happen. But I would genu genuinely like to see my enemies get saved. Because these enemies who spend, who are very, very busy right now attacking the brethren, attacking the church of the living God, if these people were to actually get saved, those talents that they are using for Satan, maybe our Lord could use them for the edification of the Church of the Living God. One never knows. And unfortunately, some will never know, will they? Will you? Okay? Slay them not, lest my people forget. Scatter them by thy power and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their Pride, yeah, yeah, F and for cursing and lying which they speak. Amen. Consume them in the, in wrath. Consume them that they may not be, and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. Silah. And at evening, let them return and let them make a noise like a dog and go round about the city, repeating itself, okay? <laughs> let them wander up and down for meat and grudge if they be not satisfied. Hmm. Yeah, because their rock is not as our rock, see, brethren. But I will sing of thy power, of how the Lord saved me, a sinner who is chief. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. 
for thou, for thou, hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O oh my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense and the God of my mercy. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Brother, sister, unto thee, O oh my strength, will I sing, Jesus Christ, who is in you, he is your strength. <laughs> he is your defense. He is your mercy. He is your everything. You can go anywhere. He's there with you. Watch where you're going. Okay? Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Verses 1 on to verse 7. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 4 in Psalm 61. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. Verse 2 in Psalm 91. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Rock of ages, cleft for me. I cling unto thy cross, I cling. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Hmm. Pest. Noisome pest. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Hmm. Pestilence, pests. That what? That walk, that um, walketh in darkness? Hmm. Like these devils? up at all hours of the night on their keyboards and they can't rest until they cause someone to fall or done evil or mischief. Yeah. 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 A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Uh, Saul has slayed his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Hmm. Very interesting there, huh? Second Corinthians chapter uh Second Corinthians chapter one, of course. Second Corinthians chapter one. Second Corinthians chapter one, verses twenty-one on to verse twenty-two. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit, capital S, that is himself, in our hearts. Hmm. And then 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now Revelation, Brad, where are you going? Whoa, 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 whoa. Beg your pardon. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 14. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he, will, he also will deny us. Not salvifically, but in blessing, protection, mercy, and kindness. His grace is there because... We are, part, we are of his bones and of his flesh, okay? If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. And on this, of course, go to Ephesians chapter, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, just one verse, okay? Ephesians chapter 5, one verse, verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. He cannot deny himself. Okay, why? Because he dwells in us. We are not Christ's, but Christ dwells within us. He cannot deny himself. Okay? Verse 14. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit. 
but to the subverting of the hearers. Oh, like saying a certain word mean, doesn't mean what it actually means, but it means something else? What is that? Oh, subverting of the hearers. Yeah. 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 And also while we're in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, on to verse 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, works of the law, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, uh, new creatures in Christ Jesus, uh, ambassadors for Christ, committed unto the ministry of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation, okay? Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Uh, unto certain devils, the good works that you have been ordained unto? Yeah. Okay. Okay, buddy. Whatever, whatever you say. Yeah. yeah. Up the dosage there. <laughs> uh, back in Psalm 61, verse 4. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. Verse 5. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Now, our Lord tells us, don't vow, because God's going to hold you to your vow. Better it is that you should vow and, uh, better it is that you shouldn't vow and not pay rather than you vow and not pay. I just messed that up, but God takes very seriously vows, okay? God takes very seriously vows. Jephthah gave his daughter unto the Lord because he vowed to offer a burnt offering unto the Lord of the first thing that came out of his door. A lot of people like to dispute that, but within scripture about Jephthah, you prove, it, prove it wrong that he didn't do as he was supposed to do according to his vow. It was a foolish vow. You got to be careful about what you vow. That's why our Lord says, don't vow. Okay? But when you come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, Contrite, having godly sorrow and fear of him, call upon his name, and he save you. He dwells within you. You are his property. Hence, you're his servant. Not his slave, because he don't force you, see. But you are his servant. Okay? So, with that, let's get a little instruction on this. Deuteronomy chapter 26. Deuteronomy chapter 26. Deuteronomy chapter 26, we want verses 17 on to verse 19. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God, and to walk in his ways, and to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people, as he hath promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments, to be ambassadors, okay? The word of uh, reconciliation, the ministry of reconciliation, okay? And to make thee high above all nations which he hath made, in praise and in name and in honor, and that thou mayest be an holy people, holy set apart unto the Lord thy God as he hath spoken. And today, see, we've been grafted into that. We have been grafted into that, absolutely, okay? Verse 5 in Psalm 61. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. <laughs> Verses 1 on to verse 7. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Don't you know that you are accepted in the beloved? I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, interesting. In the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 15, the Lord talks about how the waters 
are people. Okay. Now, obviously, waters are some in scripture, often actual literal waters, but waters can also be a reference onto many people. And also, of course, about the parting of the Red Sea. I get that, but keep that in mind. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And of course, that is a reference onto the parting of the sea. When you had Egypt, the world, on their tail, okay, and they went through the Red Sea, okay, obviously. But remember, again, for our instruction in righteousness, waters can also be a reference unto a multitude of people. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not, flow, not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. I gave the world for their, for your ransom. Mm. Our instruction in righteousness, obviously. Because remember, Egypt in type is like a type of the world. Okay. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. Some will use this verse as a thing to say that, uh, you know, uh, the Mormons teach that Jesus came to America <laughs> and the British Israelites. <laughs> yeah. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Talking about the fulfillment when he brings every the Jews back to the homeland, okay? Okay. Even every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. Amen. Amen. And, okay. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephe now, where are you going, Brad? Ephesians chapter 1. Okay. Let's refresh ourselves. Verse 5. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3. On to verse 12. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, there has been a video done on Calvinism where we go through the scriptures and debunk Calvinism. The Lord does it through the scriptures, okay? I'll remember to put that in the video for you, okay? Any questions? Look at that video, okay? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Like I said, I'll put the Calvinism video in the description box, okay? Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. Meaning, once you come to the Lord on his terms and he save you, your destination is fixed. You're predestinated to be with the Lord Jesus. Okay? According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. The beloved, Israel, accepted in that. We're grafted in. Okay? We have a part of that heritage. What do you think an inheritance is? We are inheriting the heritage of who? Okay? To the praise of his glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. More on that in a second. According to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. All things in him. We are all one in Christ Jesus. There isn't a Jew. There isn't a Gentile. There isn't a male, a female, a Republican, a Demokami, okay? We're all one in Christ Jesus as pertaining to salvation. 
Culturally, that's a different thing. Salvifically, we're all one in Christ Jesus. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. An inherit. What does it mean to inherit? We're, we're getting part of what? An heritage. Okay? In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Okay? Okay? Now, go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 17. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, the kingdom of God, which today is the spiritual kingdom we're not building kingdoms down here catholics are building kingdoms down here and people who are emulating catholics are building kingdoms for themselves down here okay in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. Remember, Paul says, all things are yours. Not everything edifies. Not everything is convenient. Okay? Yeah, you can go ahead and be as worldly and as wicked as you want. It's not going to edify you. It's not going to be convenient. It's going to hinder your blessings. You deny him, he'll deny you. Not salvifically, okay? You got to be careful. You got to be careful. And remember who your liberty truly is. It is Jesus Christ. Get your facts straight, okay? <laughs> okay? And what is this all boiling down to? You know how he has made us uh, partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light? Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. This is what this is. Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 1 under verse 6. Okay. Also, it's uh, Romans chapter uh, 11. Okay. Actually, let's read Romans chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. Uh, verses, uh, eh. Romans chapter 11. <laughs> Did I forget to take my Ritalin this morning? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Romans chapter 11, verse 11. <laughs> I say then, have they, the Jews, stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come on to the Gentiles, that's me, that's most of us, to provoke them to jealousy. <laughs> I have yet to meet one authentically saved brother or sister who is a Jew, who willingly partakes in a pagan holiday and wants any association with that. And do you think they are being made jealous by what they are seeing today? Are you? You, you do remember it's the time of Jacob's trouble, right? And what kind of testimony are we leaving for them? That's all I got to say about that, okay? That, that'll be addressed much later, much later, okay? But we've been grafted in to provoke them to jealousy. Uh, verses 24 on to verse 25. For if thou wert cut out of, the olive, out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, talking about us being brought in, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. What is it? We'll look at that mystery in a second. 
lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Okay? What is that? Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 6. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Oh, Catholics talk about it. The mystery, mystery. The mystery is a little bit more simple. As I wrote before in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages, other dispensations, okay, was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. What is this mystery? What is it? What is it? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. Verse 5 in Psalm 61. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows and hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And while we're back in the Psalms, that fear thy name. That fear thy name. Psalm, yeah, I'm beating, we're beating this dead horse here. Okay. Psalm 145. Psalm 145. Psalm 145, verses 14 on verse 20. The Lord upholdeth all that fall, brother, sister, you're truly saved, born again, converted, new creature in Christ Jesus. He lives in you. He cannot deny himself. You mess up. He's going to whoop you. But get up. The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. Paul doesn't talk about, oh, yes, he does. Knowing that for the terror of the Lord, we persuade, persuade men, knowing like John who fell at his feet as dead, having to give an account. Yeah, everything Paul preached was hindered on the fear of the Lord. Not hindered, excuse me. Hinged, excuse me, excuse me. Beg your pardon. Hinged, not hindered. Hinged on the fear of the Lord. Okay, not hindered. Beg your pardon for that. Okay. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. But all the wicked will he destroy. And Psalm 147, verses 10 and 11. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. <laughs> he taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. Legs of a man and a horse are in the same... Mm, what a coincidence. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. Verse 5 in Psalm 61 again. For thou, God, hast heard my vows... Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Verse 6. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. Now, our lives are in the hand of the Lord. But this is a psalm of David. What is this talking about? I'll go to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. Okay. 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel. King David was used to the Lord. He messed up big time with Bathsheba and it cost him highly. Oh, did it ever cost him. 
But this was before his sin with Bathsheba. Get a load of this. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 18, unto the close of the chapter. Can you handle this? Huh? A little too much scripture for you? This is after the Lord says to Nathan, look, David wants to build me a tabernacle. He's not going to do it. There's, he's got a little thing that he's got against him. A different one is going to build my house. So go tell him this. Okay. So the Lord is telling David, told David through Nathan, it's like, hey, hey, bless your heart and soul. You want to do that. But let me tell you like it is. And he tells him, it's like, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to build your house. I'm going to establish your kingdom. And your heir, your son, which eventually heir to the throne of David is our Lord Jesus Christ, will sit on your throne. Okay. David picks this up. Verses 18 on to the close of the chapter in 2 Samuel 7. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto? Like, Who am I? <laughs> you know, I'm a sinner as chief. Who am I? And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God, but thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. And is, and is this the manner of man, O Lord God? And what can David say more unto thee? For thou, Lord God, knowest thy servant. For thy word's sake, and according to thine own heart, hast thou done all these great things to make thy servant know them. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, and there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself, to make him a name, and to do for and to do for you great things and terrible for thy land, by, before thy people, which thou redeemest, to thee from Egypt. From the nations and their gods? For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever, and thou, Lord, art become their God. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant, he's like, I'm going to take care of you. You're not building anything for me. I'm the one that, remember, God's the one that takes care of us. We're not taking care of God. We need God. He doesn't need us. Okay? And concerning his house, establish it forever, as, and do as thou hast said. And as far as verse 25 is, he has done what he said. Christ Jesus, son of David, king of the Jews, when he come back and reign from Jerusalem, okay? It will be fulfilled. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 26. And let thy name be magnified forever, saying, the Lord of hosts is the God over Israel. And let the house of thy servant David be established before thee in Christ Jesus. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, hast revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee in house. Therefore hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. And now, O Lord God, thou art that God, and thy words be true. And thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore now, let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee. For thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it. And with thy blessing, let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. Amen. 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 Psalm, uh, which one are we on? We are on, um, yes, verse 6, okay. Psalm 71. Psalm 71. Psalm 71. Verses 12 on to verse 18. O God, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste for my help. Let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries to my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. But I will con hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. Amen. Hallelujah. My mouth shall shew forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day, for I know not the numbers thereof. Excuse me. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. 
Look at that verse. Don't look at me. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even thine only. See, what happens is people like to forget conveniently and put their righteousness in and try to mingle it with Christ's righteousness, hence exalting themselves. O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works, how God saved me, a sinner who is chief. Okay? Being a testimony. One of the things that we can be happy in service and joy that the Lord is in us. Okay? Talked about that already at length. Okay? No matter how much YouTube wants to silence it. Okay? Wow. Okay. Wow. 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 Past three videos. Some of you, you've seen up and down, up and down, up and down. Wow. You two really didn't like them, did they? Anyway, let's continue. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not until I have shewed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Thy strength unto this generation. Are we doing that? Or batting yourselves on the back. Breaking people down. Are we doing that, brethren? With what's coming? We need to circle our, our wagons, brethren. Okay? Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. Isaiah 46. Oh, Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46, verses 3 on to verse 5. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from, from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made, and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. Verse 5. To whom will ye liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? Looking at yourself in the mirror, Jack, often, huh? Huh? Who are we going to compare unto the Lord who provides for us, who takes care, of, takes care of us, and we are seated together in Christ? Hmm? Who are we going to compare? What are we going to compare the Lord unto? Are some of you trying to compare worldly success and worldly things unto the Lord? I wonder. I wonder. And you as the church of the living God, if God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against us? Okay? And of course, of course, of course, First Peter, of course, of course, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 on verse 12. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it, as much as it is possible in you, that lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. But um, what about those who don't want peace with you? Okay, let's go, buddy. <laughs> Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. We we our weapons are not carnal. Carnal, fleshly. This, computers, um... The, the tactics that the devil and these so-called Christian tactics. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. More on that in the future. But, um, yeah. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but strong, mighty in God, pulling down, casting down imaginations. Okay? 
I just Bradized that. That's in Galatians, I think. Uh, I think. I might have that wrong, but our weapons are not carnal. Our weapon is prayer. Our weapon is our Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. These people, go ahead and play on your little computer all day. That's what you guys do. Yeah. Yeah. Now, go back to Psalm 61, verse 7. Let's read verse 6 again. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God, uh, verse 7, he shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. Oh, oh. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 7 again. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. John chapter 10, verses 9 on to verse 11. <laughs> We'll address this in another video. I am the door. Who is the door? Our Lord Jesus Christ. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Jesus Christ is the door. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, verse 14 in John chapter 10. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. And while we're here, let's go to verses 27 on to verse 30. In John chapter 10, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So out of his hand, out of his father's hand, I and my father are one in essence. Oh, I and my father are one in um in spirit. No, I and my father are one. One spirit, soul, and body. One God made of spirit, soul, and body. Just like you and I. <coughs> we have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Uh, that's not Trinitarian. That's Godhead. Okay? And the proof that he was speaking of the Godhead, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Yeah. And now John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Uh, let's refresh ourselves. Verse 7 in Psalm 61. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. Jesus is the door. Okay. John chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we, not, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. <laughs> and First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, <laughs> who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. He shall abide, uh, Psalm 61, verse 7, He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. We already looked about how God takes care of his own in this dispensation, okay? Verse 8. So will I sing Praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Daily perform my vows. Daily live as the church of the living God. Seek him daily, because you can't do this without him, unless you abide in him. Psalm 96. Psalm 96. Oh, brethren. Those of you who are struggling, take comfort. Repent of what you need to repent of. Get right with the Lord. Start walking according to the scriptures. Sing praises unto him. Walk according to the scriptures. Don't make our Lord ashamed of you. Or don't bring shame upon him by the way you behave. Psalm 96. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Shew forth his salvation from day to day. Yes, from day to day. Shew forth his salvation. Shew. You know, you, God has put into you. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work out what the Lord has put in. Okay? Live as a testimony. Okay? Not just when all eyes are seeing you. How are you when it's just you and the Lord? Yeah. How are you when the camera is off, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. He saved me. Me, the worst of the worst. Okay? The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Ye are gods. <laughs> Ye are gods. i got to remember to put that one in the description box. Gods. Little g. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hmm. Of course, God is above the little statutes, but God is above men who are as gods, knowing good and evil, judging. Okay? For all the gods of the nation are idols. Yes, the little statues and stuff. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. I love the, that the fact that the Lord is not like me at all. Sinless. He was man. God manifest in the flesh, yes. But he was nothing like me. He's nothing like me. He's other. But yet, while God was manifest in flesh, he went through everything that you and I go through. Or worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. This is another uh, flat earth verse. Leave it alone. We got bigger fish to fry. Okay. I don't care what you think the shape of the earth is. Okay. I really don't. Okay. I don't. But that's another 
flat earth verse right there. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice. All the trees of the wood rejoice. I believe that's a reference on the people, you know, trees that grow from a seedling up into a mighty tree, and some get so mighty in themselves, you know. What is that? Uh, Though you make your nest on high, yet will ye be brought down? Before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Okay. And of course, my wife's favorite song. My wife's favorite song. His mercies are new every morning. You have today. What are you going to do with today? Psalm 118, my wife's favorite. Verses 19 on to verse 24. Psalm 118, excuse me. Verses 19 on to verse 24. Open to me the gates of righteousness. Opening the gates. What are on what are those gates? Doors. Who is the door? Yeah. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. Oh boy, so many tie-ins with John chapter 10. Okay? I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. Our Lord Jesus Christ is our salvation. He is the door. And you're booting the door, huh? <laughs> the stone which the builder refu builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice. And be glad in it. You have today. You can't fix what was there to yesterday, brother, sister. You can't help with what's going on for tomorrow. You got today. Sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. Most not thyself of tomorrow. Okay? Okay? And daily. Daily. You, you know, prayer is much, is not just it's prayer is life unto us at the church of the living god because we are having a conversation with the living god okay it's not so, it's not uh it's not a monologue it's a dialogue okay it truly is a dialogue and through our prayers we seek the lord daily and he gives us daily what we need because you know sometimes i mean we get so depressed that we don't even want to wake up it's another day it's another day. But this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yet it is another day. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. What are you doing, Brad? Come on. <laughs> Luke chapter 9, verses 23 under verse 26. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, yes. But our instruction in righteousness, which we need so desperately right now. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And seek him daily for that strength. Okay? Give us day by day this day our daily bread. Okay? Okay? Granted, that's for the kingdom of heaven. Absolutely. And people who use that as an excuse to not do things, yes, but the truth is we need to face the Lord, or we need to seek the Lord every day for Him to give us what we need for that day. Okay? Well, whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be 
ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and, in the, and of the holy angels. Seek him daily, brethren. And Matthew chapter 6, Sermon on the Mount, yes, which is for the kingdom of heaven, yes. Matthew chapter 6, this is our instruction in righteousness. Take, therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. He knows what you need. He knows what you need. Wants are many. Needs are few. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. But this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. But it is another day. Philippians chapter 4, just, just one verse. Philippians chapter 4. One verse, verse 14. Verse 19. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Hmm. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever Amen. Oh, brethren, I know, I know, I've seen, I, I, I've seen, I, I've seen a few comments, uh, uh, several emails. We can't live up to the measure of Christ. And we know that. And we mustn't browbeat ourselves. I mean, that's what Romans chapter 7 is about. A oh, wretched man that I am, you know. But we got to remember, brethren, when we can't succeed, that is when the grace of God is unspe it's, it's unspeakable. It's so glorious, the grace of God for us today, for his church, the body of Christ, the church of the living God. I know a lot of you are struggling. But rejoice. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. But it is another day. Yet another day. It's healthy to remember from whence you came. It's healthy to rem remind yourself, it's like, hey, I used to be this. But see, when you dwell on that and that keeps dredging itself up, whether it's by physical remembrance or not, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if you are in sin, whatever your sin may be, and now you are aware of it, Praise the Lord. Repent. Whosoever for, uh, confesseth and forsaketh his sins shall have mercy. What is that? Uh, one second. That is in Proverbs 28. I believe that is, right? Right, brother? You, you ought to know this. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. I think it's 28. One second. I got to find it. Now, sorry about that, it was. It was Proverbs 28, uh, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Verse 14 in Proverbs 28. Happy is the man that feareth always, always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. And of course, 1 John chapter 1. Did you know I was going there this time? <laughs> uh, verses 5 unto the close of the chapter. In 1 John chapter 1, then that's it. This is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, 
and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. If you are in sin right now, repent of it. Confess it to the Lord. Repent of it. Get right with him and start walking worthy of that vocation which you are called. We're going to fall. We're going to mess up. We're going to sin every day. Yes, we are. But see, that's why a daily relationship with the Lord, a dialogue. How many of you pray? There are those out there who claim to be Christians, but they don't pray. Of course not, because they're not saved. Or you might be saved, but you just don't want to go to the Lord because you know how he's going to handle you. Fear not. Rejoice. Our time is coming to an end. Our time is coming to an end. Don't fear. Don't fret. Be strong in the Lord and continue down that path that he has set you on. And be encouraged, dear brethren. Please be encouraged. Don't go hang yourself for the wretchedness of this flesh. Because our time will come. Our time will come when we will hear, come up hither, or to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. Tis another day. But there again, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad of it. So, that is going to be it for this video. Very impromptu. I uh, was very excited to share this with you. Uh, because I know for certain that so many are struggling right now. Hopefully this will be an encouragement to you. Hopefully. Thank you unto all you brethren, sisters, uh, Church of the Living God, who uh, contact us, who help us, who pray for us. We pray for so many of you. We pray for you. Please keep us in your prayers. We need all the prayers uh, we can get. And... Um, we need your prayers. We covet them. We truly do. Pray for one another. If you are able, if time allows. See, we, we especially recently, we really, time. <laughs> time is precious. That's why, praise the Lord, that we will be, once we either go to be with the Lord because we die or we're uh, redeemed, that's why It'll be such a joy that we will be outside of time where time doesn't mean anything. And it's just an eternity with our Lord Jesus Christ and with each other. Isn't that great? And what do you devils have to look forward to? Another notch in your belt? Another uh, clinking in your coffers? Pity you. So, that's going to be it for this video. Got another video coming. So, thank you for watching this. If you do, we love you. We will see you in the next video.